Oil prices are up this morning. Brent and West Texas Intermediate both to the plus side. Meantime, gas prices are still soaring. The national average for regular uh, unleaded a gallon of gas is at $4.12 a gallon to uh, $2.88 a gallon a year ago, uh, but it's off the record highs of 412. Now is it? I think the new record is 433. Joining me now, Short Group Principal Stephen Short. Stephen, you're focused on uh, two key points right now. Energy prices are coming down, but why? And is it bad news? Yeah, let, let, yeah and let's keep things into perspective. Uh, energy prices coming down. Yes, they're coming down from $130, $135 a barrel, but we're still holding above $100 a barrel. And this is even before one day in. Uh, we begin to switch over to summer grade uh, gasoline, uh, which is going to be more expensive to produce and therefore more expensive for the consumer. And uh, we're at the weakest demand point. So in the months ahead, as we switch over to a higher uh, priced gasoline to produce and demand uh, kicks in. No, energy prices in the here and the now are not falling. But, you know, Dagan, there is some good news. Energy prices are going to fall. The bad news is they're going to fall because of recession. And at this point, a recession is unavoidable. When we look at the data going back, beginning with the Arab oil embargo in the mid 70s, every recession, six in total since then, with the exception of the three month long COVID recession, Every recession, a significant rise in energy and food costs had led into that recession. And this is where we are now. Consumer incomes are falling. They've fallen 13 out of the last 14 months uh, as a result of this runaway inflation. That can only translate uh, down the road into an economic downturn sooner, i.e. 6 to 12 months, rather than later, 18 to 24 months. Liz Peake, jump in here. Uh, good morning. I guess my question would be, what about the slowdown in China? I mean, this is a global product we're talking about. It seems to me more significant right now is what the World Bank just uh, pronounced, that, that global growth is slowing precipitously, and particularly in China and Europe. Yes, the U.S. is perhaps tipping into recession next year, but what does, that, what does the global issue mean uh, for supply and demand going out over the next 12 months? Well, thanks, Liz. And that does lead into the thesis that oil prices, energy prices, food prices will come lower because the United States economy at this point still in this day and age, if we sneeze, the rest of the world catches a cold, right? So if we're going into recession, yes, Europe and China certainly are going to recession. This is not unlike 2008 when oil prices, uh, which are now trading at levels not seen since 2008, certainly what we've seen from the World Bank, the, the dire warning seminar, the IMF, the economic slowdown is coming, but inflation is not falling fast enough. So this will be the tipping point, not only for a rece recession here in the United States, but elsewhere. I mean, let's con consider that natural gas prices here in the United States are trading the equivalent of about $20 barrel oil. In Europe, they've been trading the equivalent over the past year of $200, $300 barrel right. oil. So yes, it's bad here in the United States. Heck of a lot worse in Europe and certainly no better in China. Uh, Stephen, how much money per day is still going to Vladimir Putin to murder Ukrainians from Europe in terms of buying of oil and natural gas from Russia? How many, you know, how much uh, is Europe still reliant on Russia's fossil fuel supplies? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, it's a moving target because uh, they have been official embargoes of Russian oil since the invasion. The industry traders have effectively embargoed uh, Russian oil because they, they don't want to take that credit party risk uh, with the mm -hmm. Russians. So, so they're shunning Russian cargoes and the trading there of Russian cargoes. But you still have long-term contracts that are being honored. Uh, but I uh, can't put a figure on it right now, mm -hmm. but it's been a significant blow. Uh, since February. As far as the Europeans are concerned, I know J.P. Morgan uh, earlier this week came out with a dire forecast, $185 oil. Uh, if the Europe's and the Europeans are, are making noise that after the French elections, that they will go ahead with a ban on Russian uh, imports uh, oil. So that would be a major blow uh, mm -hmm. to Putin. Uh, now, the, the problem is, as J.P. Morgan pointed right. out, if this yeah. is an immediate embargo, oil could go to $185 a barrel 
-hmm. Shark, our quantitative modeling, gives that probability a 14% likelihood. So odds of six to one that we could be pushing 185 by the year end. And there's the oil part and then the natural gas part as well. Speaking of oil, though, if you, yes. if you, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and the Emirates combined could, with excess production capacity, produce about the amount of oil that I think um, has like about 4 million barrels per day. So that would largely offset any oil cutoff from Russia coming into Europe. But, 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 but the U.S. has reportedly stopped even asking Saudi Arabia to part more oil to lower prices because the relationship between us and Saudi Arabia has hit a new low. According to the Wall Street Journal, U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan brought up the 2018 killing of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi in a meeting with the Crown Prince, the comment angering the prince to the point where he told Sullivan to never mention it again and to forget about Saudi Arabia increasing oil production. So the Biden administration, and it's not just that, but it's, uh, you know, not uh, sending arms. It, it's not standing up for Saudi Arabia against the Houthis as part of what has damaged that relationship. But how do you see it? Yeah, absolutely, Doug. And I've seen this clear as day since uh, one month after Biden moved into uh, office. So well before the Khashoggi uh, uh, murder plot, um, the administration for, and I don't know why, but they chose to alienate MBS, the de facto head of mm -hmm. that state. And they only will carry out business through MBS's father, his 86-year-old father. So the future in Saudi Arabia is MBS and why the United States, this government, uh, refuses to, to work directly with MBS is, is beyond me. So, Doug, we saw this coming in the short report. We've been writing, I'm keeping a catalog at every decision that this administration has made uh, to drive energy costs higher. And certainly, our alienation of MBS, to your point mm -hmm. about working with the Houthis, to your point, well, and also, more importantly, working with the Iranians, Saudi Arabia's right. sworn enemy for them to get a nuke. No. Saudi Arabia is not happy, and they're telling this administration to go pound sand, and now the administration knows they can't ask anymore. It's just the incoherence of our energy policy when that is um, one of our greatest strengths, financially and geopolitically, the incoherence from this administration on uh, energy and our, their, our fossil fuel dominance or what used to be dominance is just mind-boggling. And, Stephen, thank Absolutely. you for always pointing it out. We will see Thanks, you again Dan. soon.